Tip one, sort your pasta sauce and your pasta shapes out and get them to match. First of all, long pasta shapes, so linguine, fettuccine. These are great with seafood dishes. Seafood dishes tend to be quite oily. Um, and this really suits long pasta because the oil helps the, helps the long pasta twirl around the fork. Whereas meat dishes, uh, chunky meat and vegetable sauces, they're great for small pasta. Particularly uh, interesting shaped small pasta such as farfalle or uh, fusilli. They've got a big surface area so they're going to hold that chunky sauce really well. The exception of course is spaghetti bolognese. I can't explain that one. Meat sauce, long pasta. It's a bit of an a enigma really, pasta-wise, but generally speaking, long for seafood, short for meat. Tip number two, don't mix pasta shapes or even the same pasta shape but different brands of pasta in the same pan or in the same dish. It just doesn't work. They'll have different pasta cooking times and that won't work at all. That will mean you'll have different pastas being ready at different times. Some of them will be almost not almost raw but pretty pretty hard and some of them will be super soft and overcooked not a good idea um, if i do this my uh, neapolitan wife uh, gives me some serious looks and a bit of a talking to so it's a no-no don't mix those shapes tip three and this is what i'm often asked by visitors to pasta recipes made easy.com this is how much pasta should you serve for a main course or for a side or or a starter dish the general Italian way of doing things, and I've found this in restaurants and so on, is 100 grams or 3.5 ounces of pasta per person for pasta as a main dish. For a starter dish, or primo piatto, as the Italians call it, you're looking really a little bit less, so maybe around 80 grams, which is, I think, about 2.8 ounces. And don't forget, pasta will make you feel very full 10 or 15 minutes afterwards. There's a bit of a, a fullness delay, I call it. So if you eat slower, and this is generally better for nutrition anyway, you're less likely to overeat as your body will become aware of how full it is as you eat rather than finishing and then thinking, oh, I'm still hungry. And then 10 minutes later, you'll feel like you're going to explode. So 100 grams, 3.5 ounces, that, that's your standard serving. Number four, how much water should you use when you're cooking your pasta? Well, for you uh, American viewers, I would say one quart or uh, for, for every 100 grams or 3.5 ounces of pasta. So for every single person serving, stick a quart of water in there. Uh, for us Brits, let's do this in kettles. I use two full kettles worth of boiling water for two person serving of pasta. Um, that, that's the standard. It really is more than you would think and it really helps, gives the pasta room to, room to bubble around and, uh, and you don't want it stuck to the sides, you don't want it um, pushing out of the surface too much. So that's about perfect, really a lot of water. And uh, get your water boiling and when it's boiling, pop your pasta in. When it's reboiling, because the pasta will knock the boil off, when it's reboiling, that's the time to start your timer on the pasta. Okay, five. This is a quickie, really good tip. If you have a wooden spoon and you're worried maybe about the water boiling over, maybe you have to go to the bathroom or sort the kids out, take a wooden spoon and put that, just balance it over the top of your pan when the pasta's boiling. Now, as long as you don't have it stupidly turned up high, like ridiculous that it, it can't avoid boiling. If it's just on a good high setting, the, the wood in the spoon, bizarrely, will stop the bubbles going over the, and therefore the water going over the top of the pan. It's a science thing, I don't understand it, all I know is it works. So wooden spoon, top of pan, sorted. Number six, overcooking pasta is the equivalent of evil, really, when it comes to Italian cooking. It ideally should be al dente, which means firm to the tooth. Basically, follow the pasta packet's instructions, as, as just explained in the previous tip. If you want to check, rather than just, just tasting, here's a good rule, take out a piece of, pa a piece of pasta, Obviously cool it down, blow on it a little bit, and then uh, take, take a bite. When you've got half your pasta, if you can look at the inside of the pasta, if they're still white inside the pasta, it needs a bit longer. That's my suggestion. So have a bite or, or cut into the pasta, and if it's still white, you've got a couple more minutes to go. Tip seven is about when you're cooking tomato sauce, which is often a staple, really, of a lot of Italian pasta dishes. Um, 
you'll, you'll cook this for 15 or 20 minutes and the idea is that the tomato sauce will gradually taste less sour as the tomatoes cook. Um, if it still tastes sour at the end though, rather than over overcooking it and really losing all the liquidity, there's two things you can try. You can either pop in a, a pinch of sugar, which negates or, or, or kills off really the acidity in the sauce. But uh, what one reader also told me, which also works, is uh, just a teaspoonful of milk. Uh, that does exactly the same job. So just a tiny bit, sugar or milk, and uh, you, your tomato sauce should be pretty much ready straight away. Basil, lovely herb, used very much in Italian cooking, pasta sauces, uh, pestos, or lasagna, anywhere you're gonna use the, the leaves uh, without a food processor, such as in a sauce um, or in a, in a lasagna when you throw it in the layers. One tip, don't chop basil leaves. It uh, creates a real squidgy mess. Uh, they're not very good at being chopped. Rinse them as you would normally in some uh, lukewarm water, but then rip them with your fingers. Um, it creates a nicer, uh, a cleaner tear, if you like, and they'll look better and they won't look uh, turn into mush like they can do when you chop them with a knife. Okay. In nine, Italians eat pasta with maybe a little bread, which is great for mopping up the sauce, but if pasta's a main dish or even a primo piatto, they don't eat it with anything else. So if you have an Italian coming around for dinner, do not serve them lasagna with salad on the side. That's a no-no. For, uh, for Italian, pasta is, uh, the, it is the, the course, it is the meal. So uh, aside from a bit of bread, stick to the pasta. And finally, a quick cheesy tip. Um, as you probably know, Italians uh, tend to grate a lot of parmesan uh, on their meals. But this is really for, for some vegetable and, and meat dishes. If you're serving seafood pasta, don't go grating parmesan on it. That's like a, some kind of sacrilegious act in Italian cooking. It's the equivalent to ordering a cappuccino uh, after lunchtime. That's a no-no, that's a it's a breakfast drink. Okay, those are the tips. I uh, hope you found them useful and I hope they'll get you cooking really some uh, tastier pasta with this uh, bit of insider knowledge. Uh, for, more, for more tips, for more recipes, for more sauces, uh, everything pasta related, have a mooch on over at pastarecipesmadeeasy.com and my name's Matt, I'll see you there.